I'm sure that the the victims uh, of of harassment and such would not feel like <laughs> they should be thanking them. And mm. you pr- probably because uh, uh yeah you you dealt with a lot of hate and harassment yourself. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from people like in their audience that were like calling me a uh, racist because I mentioned the blinders a white cis guy could have. And, mm-hmm. Oh, it's all about white now, is it? Are you racist? You know something's up when guys are getting mm. offended by the word white, right? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know something's wrong. All right. Hi, and welcome to the Skeptical Leftist Podcast, uh, the show where I talk to a variety of people to spread critical thinking, progressive politics, and left-wing philosophy. And today I'm joined by Ina, or uh, Ina Nice Mangoes. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, uh, you can say it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's your at on Twitter, so I suppose. That's right. (laughs) Well, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, we uh, we uh, said before the show uh, that we've been trying to get this going for uh, quite a while. There's been a lot of delays in one way or another, and no, it's, it's just really been nice. a really crazy year for me. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Like unbelievably, this has been a a, a really big uh, a month for me. Actually, I've had three guests that I've been working at getting on the show for over two years. No way. <laughs> yeah. So, that's awesome yeah it's pretty nice would i know any of them uh do you know who zoe baker is of the uh youtube channel anarcho pack no i'm not really familiar with too many youtubers and uh margaret killjoy is the other one relatively well-known anarchist podcaster oh like in anarchist circles these are superstars <laughs> right right no i'm sure i feel stupid now <laughs> no no <laughs> Yeah. But you have been uh, uh, quite busy with your show, uh, Polite Conversations. Uh, you've been, uh, I guess, uh, the Sam Harris focused things have kind of been off, but you've been doing like Twitter spaces and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I definitely have been doing that, though. I mean, the main production stuff was kind of slow for the last year. Just lots going on. <laughs> Just because I, yeah, I had a lot going on. We went through something pretty tragic in my family. So we're just dealing with that. And, um, but now I am, you know, back and ready to gear things up again. I have launched a new mini series on the global far right. And uh, every month I'll be visiting, well, not visiting, but, you know, um, in podcast form. Yeah. Uh, a different country and talking to an expert, um, an academic or. Oh, um, that is cool. Yeah. That is so cool. I, uh, I'm, I, I don't know, maybe it's weird, but I'm really kind of obsessed with podcasts about the far right. <laughs> like I listen to so many of them. So me too. There's something about that. Like, uh, learning about the ins and outs of the, the guys I think are really bad, I guess. <laughs> hmm. And, you know, another thing that really, more than the blatant far right, at least in the past, I ha- have been very interested in the kinds of people that slip through the radar mm-hmm. or, you know, the people that aren't so obvious to people who aren't paying that much attention in terms of, like, their, I guess, uh, thinly veiled racism as being, like, rational Oh scientific. yeah, yeah. Or their, you know, transphobia, um, being repackaged as concern for women, <laughs> and um, I mean, because they used to do that tactic with like their anti-Muslim sentiment too. Like, no, 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 we don't yep. hate Muslims. We just really worried about the women, the way that they treat women. And then, meanwhile, you look at everything else they say. It's like anti-feminist, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and then also, like, a new category, I guess, is that I've been intrigued by um, or disgusted by is, like, the faux progressive bros or 
progressives that, you know, (laughs) proclaim to be these amazing feminist allies and just, yeah, uh, yeah, just are the absolute opposite of that. But, you know, I guess when you have a very shallow way of looking at things, you're easily impressed by the things that they say. And you're not right. really examining the things that they do. Yeah. And there's just always like that cult of personality, right? Like uh, you yeah. get attached to a certain person and then not, they can do no wrong anymore. Right. Yeah. I guess uh, if we're going to name names, we could say Sam Harris had that back. I don't Absolutely. know. You know, I don't know where he's at now, but he definitely had that for a long time. He still has like a, a very large, like cult following that have had, whiplash lately because of all the different types of positions they've had to try and justify. <laughs> yeah. um, but there's also like all the IDWers, right? There's Jordan Peterson. He has that kind of cult. Right. Like he says the absolute most ridiculous things that you can think of. They don't even make sense anymore. Like the no. guy is losing it. Yeah. More and more every single day, you know, like he's like those people that are just shouting about the end of the world, you know, and it's really (laughs) sad in a way because nobody in his family loves him enough to get him to step the fuck away. (laughs) Well, and I mean, his daughter like actively encourages the nonsense, right? Well, yeah, because she is making big bucks off of him. Yeah. It's like very... never has there been a less talented <laughs> nepo baby out there. My God, right? Yeah, just aggressively uncharismatic, right? Funny, dry, and just such a not intelligent sounding person. Right? Yeah. Like I, I occasionally I will watch Jordan Peterson to see what kind of craziness comes out of his mouth. <laughs> but oh, yeah. I, when I, when I see Michaela Peterson, I never will. I just, I keep going like it. And I don't, I hope that's not sexism, but she's ra- like <laughs> rabidly uninteresting. <laughs> she's very, yeah. Like just the tone of her voice is like, so, but, but I mean, I, I watch her because I, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'll have to talk to my doctor about it. Because, That's a therapist situation. Yeah. Because <laughs> I also listen to Sam Harris, who is aggressively dull, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, I don't listen to him no. either. Like, I had to, like, <clears throat> I I stopped listening to him back when I was still in my hardcore atheist days. But Oh, good for you. But Because his voice was just uninterested. Like, I couldn't do it. <laughs> It was yeah. actually dangerous if I listened to him while I was driving. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet. I bet. Th- th- I should come with a warning that yeah. podcast. Like, do not operate heavy machinery or drive. Yeah, for um, sure. <clears throat> but, yeah, no, I can take a lot of boring voices if they're saying horrible enough <laughs> stuff, I guess. <laughs> the funny thing is, I get enough of it, like, uh, when I'm listening to your show, I get enough of it that mm. I'm outraged enough that I'm like the condensed version. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm already, all it takes is ten seconds of him saying some inane, absolutely offensive bullshit. I'm like, I apologize <laughs> for that. But if anyone listening doesn't know what Corey's talking about, it's probably the mini series that I do on Sam Harris that has been on hiatus, and I am planning to revive it um, just for a couple more episodes. Um, but yeah, if you want like condensed, horrendous IDW clips, uh, you should check it out. Yeah, it's good. It's a good thing it's interspersed with your commentary and like music <laughs> and stuff because I, 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 again, I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> you know how <laughs> angry I make some people. They're like some of the reviews after I started um, that series was like, they're <laughs> yeah. This woman is so opinionated and so rude. And, yeah. 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 I, I, re- I seem to recall like uh, there was uh, Sam Harris, like he called you crazy or something. And like, that was a mm. big thing among his fr- his fans for a while was thinking. Yeah. You yeah. Crazy. And you, you see it still echo. Oh, I know. Oh yeah. She's just crazy. <laughs> he never provided any like evidence for say- like why he was saying that. Never. 
just Never you're a, a woman who disagrees with me and that's all I need, yeah. right? Yeah. That's all that you need. I mean, meanwhile, I have <clears throat> like detailed criticisms of him. And I guess that's what makes me crazy because I criticize him. And how can you? If you if you are a rational person, you simply cannot disagree. You either don't understand or you're taking him out of context. He really believes that, options. doesn't he? Like Yeah, no, I think he does. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't agree. If you don't agree, uh, then you're like you're actually just like you're either completely dishonest or you're completely yeah. ignorant. Like and that's it. Like Yeah, those are the two you cannot disagree. Yeah. Yeah. It's Yeah. So if you go on the subreddit and if you ever see me mentioned, oh my gosh, yeah. The <laughs> comments are filled with how crazy I am. But the only thing they can point to is the fact that I do content on Sam Harris and then it's like you see, there's the whole, oh, you don't know. You don't know what he says because you clearly haven't listened to enough of his content. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, actually I have. I listen yeah. to almost all of it. What? You're obsessed. You're obsessed. You're crazy freak. <laughs> you can't win. Like, you can't win. <laughs> you can't win, right? And do they say this to the people who do like Alex Jones? Like they cover Alex Jones. Are they like covering him because they're, oh my God, they're, they're obsessed. obsessed with him? Yeah. No. Because they want to cover how bad shit he is. Yeah. No, it, you, it, that's the thing. Like, I don't know, it takes time to listen to what they say. So, cause there's always couched in so much like other stuff. There's, there's so much fluff and there's so much like humming and hawing and rhetoric that doesn't actually mean anything before they actually get to the, the shit so that then they slip in the racism or the IQ science or the, mm. the, the anti-feminism, they slip it in mm -hmm. in between all the, the nonsense. Yeah. And it's like how Peterson does his like self-help stuff, but will slip in his fascist bullshit. Right, <laughs> like in right. cell in cell uh sympathizing and stuff, you know? Yeah. Oh, we should just have like uh what was the term that he said? Enforced monogamy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that was his response to a fucking incel terror attack that's what he said in response yeah to that. yeah it's it's fa it's amazing that like uh like when people when there was backlash to that like how his fans and like the the centrist reasonable centrist types mm. like they absolutely couldn't see how obviously problematic that was and how shit that is as like well they were just saying like no 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 you're taking him out of context <laughs> that's obviously not what he meant no that's literally what he meant <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I don't mean that we should force people to stay monogamous. I just think we should socially construct a society uh -huh. in which people are, <laughs> are yeah. encouraged. I mean, is that not what we have then? Yeah, exactly. What do you think and this is? <laughs> if you look at his older, older tweets, I guess he was less guarded. Well, I guess he's not very guarded anymore. Right. He's just unhinged, but um, Back in, I don't know, 2016, 2017, he was tweeting things like um, casual sex could necessitate uh, state tyranny or so <laughs> something like that. How is and it's, so he actually does mean he wants the state to That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, what else does that mean? Yeah, that's like actually what he's saying. So, yeah. Yeah. I guess one of the things we, uh, the reason I wanted to have you on is because you've had a lot of run-ins with like, not just the IDW centrist types that are like cloaking their, their sexism and, and racism and whatnot in reasonableness, but you've also had run-ins with people who were ostensibly progressive. Like they would go out and be like talking about how good a feminist or how much they like feminism, <laughs> but then they'll go and undermine yourself they'll or they'll try and take credit for your work they'll you know mm -hmm. in various ways so i wonder uh where should we start on that subject <laughs> well, yeah <laughs> i i don't know um i guess yeah i don't it's it's strange to be like a non-bro podcaster because <laughs> to me it feels very much like a lot of these like bro cliques they have an inbuilt sort of fan or, or like, I don't know, hype squad that are like high-fiving each other and telling each other how awesome they are all the time. Right. Oh, my God. They're, they're like so mediocre. 
and they just continue to fail upwards. And um, yeah, yeah, I have <laughs> had run-ins with um, you know what I like to call progressives, right? Uh, because uh, I guess. It pisses them off that I speak my mind and don't just like fall in line. Like I think one of the main topics that I've had a lot of um, bros get mad at me for is for insisting that new atheism is a really fucking bigoted movement. And if you are really a progressive atheist, you should not be making excuses for it. We yeah, have it's... spent so much time like calling out other groups saying, well, they don't call out the extreme ones among themselves. And, you know, yeah. it's up to the Muslims to say how bad some of the extremists are among them or that they protect like sexual predators amongst their own groups. Right. Like Catholics right. or whatever. Atheists as a group will come down on those things really hard. But yeah. often in online movement atheism, and I'm not tarring all atheists. I am as godless as they come. I enjoy being godless, and I do uh, think it's a good thing. Right. That is not my issue here. It is the very specific right-wing movement that has developed around these certain figureheads. Um, you know, kind of like the guys we were talking before, though, like the IDW and the, the new atheist Four Horsemen. Right. Kind of merged. <laughs> I use the the <laughs> dreaded word. Not... <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> they 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 uh what what do you call it when one group kind of combines with another group? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, so there was a big controversy a couple of years ago. There was like a salon article that had a title that said something like New atheists merged with the far right. And, yeah. you know, it laid out a bunch of examples. And I thought it had, uh, it pointed to some very specific things, right? Right. So I was like, the overall point I agree with. It definitely, that's, that's been my concern as a minority person, a woman of color, of Muslim background that has, been in this scene for like so many years now that is one thing that i always feel is that there is no space because all the larger figures and anyone that gets any large platforms they do that by either uplifting tokens that will spread like uh i I don't know right-wing talking points against their own groups so like quillette writers (laughs) Like Sam Harris's favorite articles on race are from, you know, guys who wrote in Quillette. And yeah. we all know Quillette is known as like phrenology Meg for a reason, right? They literally <laughs> talk about uh, race and IQ and skull measuring and stuff in there. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah. So uh, to me, it's just so obvious. In 2023, it was obvious in like 2020, it was obvious. Post-2016, I think. Yeah. So to someone who's, like, supposed to be a left ally, it seems like a very big betrayal when they're using their fairly, you know, not large like Sam Harris large, but, like, pretty well-listened-to podcasts. Right. To to make excuses and come up with, like, weird nitpicky, like, quibbles with, specific words like the term merge is not the right word if you had said it was a stepping stone to or if you had said it was a um you know a a one one thing along the path to or that i wouldn't have complained about but because he said merge that's not fair so (laughs) that article just became like this really heated subject and there were a lot of like minority people that were standing up and saying that they had not felt welcomed in the atheist scene. And so they had stepped away from it. And these guys who podcast and proclaim to be feminists and progressive allies and do episodes on these things, they were stepping up and saying no, you know, and they were coming up with excuses like, well, 
the author of this article is going to tar all atheists because when people see a headline that says new atheists merged with the far right, they're not going to think of a specific movement. They're just going to think it means all atheists that are new. <laughs> right. yeah. It was just like silly excuse after silly excuse, right? And um, yeah, they didn't address like major concerns about overlaps that Richard Dawkins has had with, uh, yeah. you know, far right people, overlaps that Steven Pinker has had, overlaps that Sam Harris has had, like so many examples. And when it came to like Peter Bogosian or James oh, Lindsay, yeah. it was like, <laughs> well, now we're going to nitpick whether they're new atheists or not. Maybe they're not new atheists. Maybe they're just atheists. And it's like, well, there's no, like, membership card, right? Yeah. So you can argue this all day. But you have to understand that there is a vibe to this movement. And everyone that has pushed right-wingery has gotten put up on a pedestal, yeah. has gotten, I mean, just look at some of the worst right-wing um trolls that we have now not in the atheist right but just generally pushing crt we've got andy no that's yep. doing the anti-antifa stuff yeah he got his start um, in the atheist movement of course yeah. he got his start in the atheist scene james Lindsay wrote a literal fucking book yeah about his atheist atheism book. yeah but guess what the excuse for that was oh well if you look at the amazon reviews there's not that many reviews. So what? So that means <laughs> he is not a new atheist. What? I don't know. Like, this is the shit that I was dealing with. And then I got so much hate for just putting out simple corrections. Like, on my show, I was like, well, no. Actually, new <laughs> atheism did merge with the far right. And let me lay out why. Yeah. And then I got, like, hate for months. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like it, it, I remember, uh, right, right around, like I'm looking at the article now actually. And, 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 uh, the author brings up, uh, Sam Harris defending Charles Murray. And mm -hmm. at that, at that time, uh, I had a debate on my show with one of my co-hosts cause I was doing a brainstorm podcast at that time. So we were, we were debating, like I was saying like, no, Ezra Klein was right. Sam Harris is wrong. And, and one of my co-hosts was trying to express, explain why IQ was really a thing and why it, it, no, uh, boy. and, and I mean, she mean, she meant well, like, uh, but, uh, but in defense of Sam Harris. Yeah. Cause she was, she was a big Sam Harris fan. actually, mm. And, and, uh, and I actually, we, I got a couple of letters, like emails to our podcast, which wasn't a very big podcast, but like I lost. A, a handful of listeners because they were uh they were like well it felt like even in that discussion about the discussion that sam harris has we we were still debating their hum the humanity mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. you know of the of the marginalized people and it's like well yeah i can't blame them for feeling that way mm -hmm. and so so to me like when when i get when i get stuff like that i try to learn from it Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it seems you don't like, triple down you mean <laughs> no i try i try to like take that in and be like okay so i did something wrong and it hurt people <laughs> so how mm. can i avoid doing that again and it seems like like a lot of the people like and i'm gonna name names like thomas smith i was a big fan of his for a long time and he was mm. one of the reasons i became progressive and more mm. vocal in my progressive but then as time went on it seemed like he went more in the double down, I can do no wrong, I'm the good one kind mm -hmm. of mentality, and rather than learning from his mistakes and from criticisms. Yeah. And I, I mean, we used to be like at least friendly with each other online. So I don't know why it became so hostile just because I criticized a pretty offensive take that I thought he had. Right. And I did it. In a pretty gentle way, I thought as well. Yeah, I thought so too. Um, <laughs> but then he turned it into like a really personal, horrible mess. And um, 
you know, started calling me a troll, claimed that he helped me start my podcast, <laughs> which yeah. is uh, really incredible. That's a, that's a theme of your podcast. Is uh... That is really a theme. <laughs> Sam Harris also once said that, you know, he helped me launch my podcast. I don't know why people lie about this because... And they, like, Thomas lied right in front of me. So it's not like I couldn't fact check him on that. No, dude, you you offered to help me edit one thing one time. I didn't ask you. Oh, yeah. And then he also specifically mentioned that he helped me not only start my podcast, he uh, helped me start it for free. Oh, and yeah? So, well, no, that's what he said. <laughs> I helped her start her podcast for free. So the alternative was that he was going to charge for it. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. Like he offered to right. edit one thing one time for me and said he could do it in two minutes. So I was like, Oh, thank you. And I gave him full credit for helping me out with that one thing. Right. And that was not the first episode of my podcast. It had already been launched. It had already existed. And it continues to exist because I continue to keep it going and have learned the skills to keep it going. Yeah. Not Sam Harris and not Thomas Smith. Yeah. Neither of them have started my podcast. Yeah, for sure. I I guess I sometimes like, uh, I want, it was, it was like at the time. So was that eye opening for you? That whole thing? Yeah. Watching it. Yeah, it was a little bit like I, I still. I kind of stopped listening to Thomas uh, before that because I noticed in uh, 2019, 2020 that they went, him and him and Andrew went from like being what I considered like reasonable progressives to like attacking the left regularly. Oh, I didn't know that. See, I never really listened to their and like, other yeah. podcasts. Yeah, like they always blamed like third party voters and non voters for Trump and they blamed like anybody except the Republican Party and 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 or the Democrats. They blamed those of us out, outside of the the party system. Mm. And I I always disagreed very vehemently about that and it just got to be too much, especially when they started endorsing like Biden and going anti Bernie. And it was like, mm. Oh my God, like, come on guys. But, but yeah, so I had stopped listening at that time. And then, so I was skeptical, but I still always mm. held in my head that like, yeah, these guys are, they're still progressive guys. They, I just disagree too much on this thing because I'm so much farther left than they are. Yeah. And, and, and then, that's possible, right? Yeah, like, yeah, of course I'm, I'm so far left. Like I disagree with a lot of people. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you and I don't agree on a lot of things, but it's okay. Like, yeah, that's right. But then, yeah, like I say, when when he was reacting to your very like uh, reasonable uh, criticisms of his episode, and you didn't even name his name, I uh, know which which was considered like some kind of hostile move. Apparently, I was trying not to be confrontational, right. Yeah, I, I considered the not, like, because I was curious after that, because I was like, well, I got to go listen to some guys to see who it was she was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was like, that, that's the, in my opinion, that is the non-confrontational way to do that, is to just say, like, okay, I saw a show, and this Here is- Here are the ideas that it, I disagreed with. That's right. Like, I'm not calling this person out. They're still, you yeah. know, somebody I like or respect. And yeah. <laughs> it's like, Whoa. And the reaction, like you say, like it was just out out of hand. Yeah, like I think he accused me of being, uh, I don't know, wor- treating him worse than Sargon of Akkad. <laughs> I mean, if anyone listening knows the right wing troll Sargon of Akkad, like fuck, he's known for being horrendous to people yeah. on the left. Yeah, for sure. So, and partic- in was, particular, Thomas Smith. He was. Yeah, like <laughs> they debated, but apparently Sargon was nicer to him than I was because I expressed my disagreements. So there's yeah. that. Then one time he was like, he, he tweeted at me that I was doing typical abuser shit. I mean, I've got screenshots for all of this. If anyone uh, has That's questions, wild. I've got a timeline. You can link it in the show notes if you want. Um, and. Uh, yeah, he was like, this is abuser shit. And someone that was like, I guess, siding with Thomas. Because there were some really funny things to come out of it. I just couldn't believe what was happening. One guy was like, 
Look at Ina. She is enjoying his pain. She and and she even tweeted like a laugh emoji or something. <laughs> and Thomas Smith like, really, listen. <laughs> yeah, and Thomas Smith was like super agreeing with that guy, and I was like, this is insane. Here they are talking to you know progressive feminist guys talking to a woman of color who is saying, hey guys, this is a big bigoted movement. You know, it's been disappointing to hear you make so many excuses for it. Maybe just listen to what I have to say. But they never, ever addressed any of my claims. They, I think I asked Thomas Smith at least seven times if he had even heard the thing he was like raging about. He refused to answer. Maybe he's heard it by now, but I don't know. He was getting mad without even, ha- even having heard it. I think. Right. And, um, yeah, it was just wild. They were not addressing me. Some guy came on and corrected Thomas about something that he had said uh, regarding James Lindsay. And then he was like, oh, yeah, you know, my bad. I made a research error and minimized, like, you know, his involvement. And I was like, I said all the same <laughs> stuff. But I'm getting called, like, this abusive bitch who's, like, enjoying his pain because I tweeted a laugh emoji. Which and, uh, I guess I guess brings me to the the point of what I we're talking about here, right? Is like, so why do you think it is that he targeted you with this this kind of harassment, and he was totally fine with some other guy criticizing him, and he was polite? Yeah, a, a few other guys actually, because right. they were like, "No, no, actually, you're wrong about this, Thomas." And they're, "Oh, thank you, yeah, thank you for letting me." And I was like, "This is just blatant." The contrast in the way that he's treating me. Yeah. He, I, I, why was it me? I mean, let's take a look. Why did I make him mad? <laughs> what could it have been? It, it, it couldn't. It couldn't <laughs> possibly be. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I can't even come up with a good sarcastic kind of like response to it. It's clearly because you're a woman. <laughs> I'm sure he would deny it, but that's certainly how it seemed to me and a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And specifically when he went out of his way to say he helped me start my podcast for free. Right. And uh, as if that may, like, let's say that he did. He absolutely did not. But But. let's say (laughs) that he did. Does that make me like forever indebted to him in a way that I cannot (laughs) express disagreement with this man? No, you must stay quiet forever. (laughs) (laughs) because <laughs> that's what it sounds like right yep yep that's right I'm just like I'm, i helped you one time like five years ago how dare you disagree with me yeah that's right. a white cis hat bro saying that absolutely the new atheist scene is not racist <laughs> like how does that look and then one time i said like you know i i, I said something about privilege and He's like, well, how can she talk about privilege? She has more Twitter followers than me. And I'm like, what? I know. I know he knows what, That's not what privilege, privilege is. <laughs> yeah. I know he knows that. Yeah. So where, why is he saying, like, why, how would, how would he feel if somebody said that to him? Right? Like, uh, if somebody was like, oh, yeah, you have more privilege because you have more Twitter followers. Well, he would point out rightly that that's not what that is. Yeah. And he would be insulting about it, probably. <laughs> yeah. So, but I don't know that that few days, uh, just it all seemed to be so obvious that he was just happy uh, talking the talk of feminism and progressiveness and anti-racism, but when asked to look inward and just kind of question that he may have some privilege and biases and blinders. Because of his privileged experience as a white guy in the atheist scene, um, he may not have experienced the things that a brown uh, opinionated woman might have or that a trans woman might have. You know, there were like a couple of trans people that were like speaking, maybe not to him, but to Eli. And he was like really rude and offensive to them, too. So, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Eli, like. Eli as a member of the uh, God awful movies podcast and some, and scathing atheist and stuff for mm. people who may not know. Uh, 
but he's another one that I, I, uh, he was really instrumental in putting me as a, like making me more out as a progressive and understanding like uh, privilege and, and racism and like, and systemic issues and being like interested in learning about these things. Because they can talk about it very well, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. don't ask them to live it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think enough well, people fair. saw the hypocrisy on that day, but also not a lot, not enough. You know what I mean? A disappointing right. amount did not. Yeah, for sure. Um, but that's also because when you get to know someone, even if you're a lefty, if you've been listening to them for like years, there is a certain attachment that's formed. That's, and maybe yeah. Yeah. The, just, uh, what do you call it? The parasocial relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you've heard them talk about their lives and what's been going on. And for me, I guess there's no face, right? So maybe there's a detachment there, but for people who put their face out there, their families' faces out there, perhaps there's a stronger attachment. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Maybe I, uh, I, uh, yeah, maybe I think, I think yeah. there is something intimate about having somebody in your ear though. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and you go, Oh, I really like this person. Like, <clears throat> like, I'm not going to lie. I, I listened to, uh, I listened to the, the scathing atheist guys and Eli and Thomas, like for years and years, like yeah. they were like people that, and so then when I saw them kind of go down this road and. I guess in general, we want, I, I don't want to just be about these guys. Like I want to. Uh, yeah. I'm, just I'm, make a broader point. Yeah. I'm trying to talk to, about like, this is a, a tendency that you see. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like I, so when I saw these guys go down this road, like then it, it really did make me more aware of like, this is a thing like uh, guys that don't have, like they have that level of privilege and they don't have to be held accountable to to upholding the ideals that they profess to have. Yeah. And you know, about that whole, I, I don't know the other people in that whole crew at all, really like the God awful movies and whatever their 1500 other podcasts are. <laughs> right. um, but it seems like there's a, there's a large number of people, uh, primarily women and minorities who say that, you know, there's a tendency. I haven't heard the podcast myself. Maybe I've heard an episode or the, or two here and there, like five years ago. But so I can't really speak to. But I've heard several women say uh, that there's like a lack of women's voices on there, women's perspectives on there, and mm -hmm. when those hosts are asked about that. They often say things like, oh, well, we do so, so many rude jokes that so, something like that. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, come on, really? You think women can't handle like rude jokes? Oh, yeah. Jokes? Right, eh? <clears throat> so, yeah. There seems to be a bit of a theme, right? So as much as I don't want to keep making this point about these guys. <laughs> They're such a great example. And when I was like, uh, you know, harassed for days um, for not naming names, I was like, okay, well, in the future, I'm just going to name names. Right, then. right. Not yeah. that that is received better, but. <laughs> we're, uh, we're confronting you openly here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. No, but, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I've been thinking about what we call now merge gate. Right. Um, <laughs> a lot recently um, in light of some stuff that's come out. Um, and I mean, I don't want to say too much about it, right. but what yeah. is public <laughs> knowledge is that Thomas's co-host, Andrew, uh, it was alleged in an article, I think that he harassed several yes. women. Yeah, for sure. Femmes? Uh, yeah, fem fem presenting people. Um, and there was just a lot of people that, like, it's hard to deny. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was corroborated right. by a lot of people. And it also came out that 
this whole crew of extremely feminist progressive guys yeah. had known this as early as I can't remember. Like the number is horrendous. I, I'm going to be conservative and say 2018. <laughs> yeah. But I think it, yeah. it might have been sooner than that. Yeah, I think that's, and that's fair. <clears throat> it uh, That is yeah. just horrifying to me because yeah. they did well i know at least thomas did like episodes on me too on the nuances of me too yeah yeah he came on my show and was a panel member for when we talked about the kraus allegations right and how bad it was that the atheist scene was giving cover to this guy yeah and so to learn years later that so many of these guys knew, um, I, again, I don't know if the other people in Eli's podcast circuit knew because I right. don't follow anything about them. I don't know them. Yeah, don't want to speak out of turn. Like, yeah, because yeah, I just am not familiar yeah. with <clears throat> them or their names or anything. So I can't say that I know about that. But I know that Thomas and Eli, at least, have known for a few years yeah, and continue to work with Andrew publicly or associate with him and benefit from a professional relationship with him financially. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and yeah. It's, it's one of these things that like, like you say, like, so is it a product of like these guys, they, is it like a boys club? Like, like, okay, it's, it's okay to be like anti Lawrence Krauss. Cause he wasn't in my group, mm. but the guys that are in my group, I'm going to protect yeah. them. Like, I'm going to keep my voice quiet. I'm going to make excuses when people text me. I'm going to, you know, or like, I'm going to just, whatever I can do, to, it's going to be my group of guys is, is we're good. Yeah. I feel like it's some kind of, again, blinders, right? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe Krauss was the other because he is not progressive or doesn't, I don't know. He used to identify as progressive feminist at some point. Um, Krauss did. <laughs> See, this is, I mean, the atheist community is rife with these examples, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a spectrum of like, <laughs> like hypocrite bros. Like it makes me think of Richard Carrier mm. <laughs> who like, was called out for sexual harassment and, and uh, misconduct of various kinds. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then when, when Stephanie's van, like actually like bro wrote about this or, and he, he was disinvited from Skepticon or whatever it was, then he sued them. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. like, and that was even like, that was years ago. I'm sure at the time, like the guys we're talking about now would have been, uh, you know, they would have condemned carrier. And I, they might have yeah. even had podcast episodes about that. <laughs> like, I don't know, but I do remember the Krauss one for sure. Cause it was on my podcast and it's just so awful to learn that. And then to look at merge gate and through that lens. Yeah. And it's like everything that I thought I knew. Cause really my reaction to that, uh, defending new atheism content that they were doing when that article came out was really one of disappointment and betrayal. It wasn't like, Oh, I'm going to show these guys who's boss. And right. you know, right. it was like, wow, I considered, I, I, I already feel like I have such few allies in the atheist scene as a progressive left leaning atheist, feminist, yeah. Muslim. <laughs> um, and yep. then like the couple of people that I thought, that were also podcasting because also among podcasters, there's so few. Yeah. And they turn out to defend this stuff. And I'm like, but I thought they, they knew better. So that's why I tried to gently present my case. And then I got more and more, I guess, less, yeah. less, less and less gentle. Um, and then to have these allegations come up and the fact that there was a, an enabling uh, group yeah. yeah, that have really had no consequences, at least it seems like Andrew has had consequences and that is how 
a community should react, I think, but to really not examine the enablers in this situation is hugely right. disappointing. Yeah. 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 And I mean, uh, yeah, like in relation to the, uh, the Andrew Torres stuff, like, uh, Felicia Antwistle, who has been a guest on this show twice and is a friend of mine. Uh, she was one of the women that, uh, <clears throat> brought up allegations about Andrew mm. and, uh, uh, the the reaction that she has received from Thomas and from uh, these other so called so called progressive men uh, in that regard, like like just not not just dismissive, but like outright insulting and claiming that uh, she should never think these things are inappropriate. These are she or or like acting as though she egged him on. Like, <clears throat> well, wasn't there? Uh... This is full on. Like it's full on rape culture, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> like that's which is yeah there was also um i think a screenshot shared uh where it sh i think andrew might have shared it i in his lawsuit or something oh, okay um and it shows thomas like not believing the victims or, right. or several of the victims like, I don't want to say the wrong thing, and I can't remember. There's so many characters and so many people That's involved true. in this yeah. that I'm trying to be very careful with what I say because I don't want to say the wrong thing. But I do think that's the basics of it. There was something shown th that Thomas said in a private conversation um, where he apparently did not believe several of the victims. and. He talked about it in a very not nice way. Yeah. And I do believe he's addressed that not very well, but he has said it himself in a, a podcast. So, yeah, there's yeah. that too. <laughs> I like to say, uh, not to make it all about these guys. It's, this isn't a drama episode. I, I want to, I, I kind of want to just point to like a, a broader thing. Like this behavior from progressive guys seems to be, seems to happen regularly it's very oh. disappointing like at least don't do episodes about the nuances of me too for god's sake <laughs> really? if you're uh. if you're if you're continuing to work with someone that you've received several complaints about yeah. and make money off of working with them like don't do that yeah for sure and uh yeah i don't know Try and learn from these things, I guess, is the idea. Like, if I'm going to give white bros my group, my white guys, come on. <laughs> Do better. <laughs> Do better. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So what's been your, uh, what, what have you thought after, you know, hearing about all these things and. You know, you you saw Merge Gate unfold as it happened, and I I mean I did I did the one very gentle episode on that where I named no one, and then I did like a longer two part panel episode where we addressed a lot of these specific right. hypocrisies and concerns, and we did name people because we were complained about for not naming people. So yeah. if anyone wants to listen to those, you're welcome to go check them out. Yeah, th those were very good episodes. And that was, I think, with uh, uh, the guys from... Uh, with Daniel from I Don't Speak German. Right, that's right. And Chrissyosity. Yeah. And Who's also Mike, awesome. <laughs> who was a YouTuber, but I don't know where they are nowadays, maybe offline. And Vadim Newquist from Creationist Cat. Uh, ah, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. It was a good panel. Yeah, for sure. Lots of, lots of good people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I don't know, like, I I, I guess like yeah, think about like in 2016, I did well not 2016, maybe 2018. I did a series of podcast interviews where I I tried to I interviewed pro social justice people and anti social justice people, and I tried to get oh. like, a kind of a a view of where these people were coming from. And eventually like it it really radicalized me because it seemed like everything that the anti social justice people said was just a lie. Like they were just <laughs> full of shit 90% of the time. And, mm -hmm. 
And uh, while the pro social justice people were very thoughtful and like they were very evidence based and very like uh, well informed, and they knew the positions of their opponents and they could refute them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in 2018, like I so I started after I did that, I started moving away from the atheist community slowly because it just seemed like there was only a handful of reasonably you know, thoughtful people that were actually mm -hmm. still in there. And so I still listened to, to Thomas at that time, I think, and, uh, and, and Andrew and, and the scathing atheist guys. But then like, like I say, like as time goes on and, and these, these chink, chinks in their armor, I guess, or whatever you call it, like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like the flaws in their, their worldview or the way they behaved came through. And you go like, okay, well now I'm just like, I'm losing faith in even the few progressives that exist. And then like, say like merge gate came out and you go, okay, well now obviously these guys are hypocrites. And then the Andrew Torres stuff comes out and you go like, okay, well the last crew that I thought was good, they're hypocrites too. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so how many of these, like, so what, uh, so I'm trying to like, I want to learn from that, right? Like I want to be aware of what I'm, I'm doing, uh, my behaviors. Am I sure that I'm treating, uh, women fair, like fairly and equally and trying to have, you know, a good, uh, diversity of, of guests on my show. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like I'm trying to be very aware of the way that I behave and not out of like some virtue signaling thing, but, but to literally legitimately live the values that I profess. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and I mean, in a sense, I guess you could say I owe these guys and their hypocrisy that lesson. I, <laughs> I, can't, I learned from them. For being such a good example <laughs> of right. what not to do. That's right. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Maybe we should thank them. <laughs> I'm sure that the, the victims uh, of, of harassment and such would not feel like <laughs> they should be thanking them. And mm. you pr probably because, uh, yeah, you've you dealt with a lot of hate and harassment yourself. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From people like in their audience that were like calling me a uh, racist because I mentioned the blinders a white cis guy could have. And, mm -hmm. Oh, it's all about white now, is it? Are you racist? You know something's up when guys are getting mm. offended by the word white, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but I, I, in my daily life, like, I still. I still am always trying to be careful. Like, uh, my children, my, my stepchildren are black and, mm -hmm. and they're girls. And, uh, I know that there's ways that society has trained me to, uh, see them in a certain way as, as like rebellious or like out of hand or like, uh, and, and I, I'm very aware of that. Like I'm trying always to like work against my programming, I guess, is the, is the idea. Right. And there's no shame in that. Like, I think everybody has these biases that are programmed into them, right. From just how society is. And it would do us all good to acknowledge that we all have them and different kinds of biases and just try to, you know, as you said, actively uh, fight them. But you can't do that if you don't acknowledge that you right. have any biases or blinders or privilege or, you know. <laughs> That's right. I if have you no think tribe. You're so, I, I, <laughs> so, yes, exactly. This is the other thing, though, right? The similarities yeah. of the progressives and the IDW guys. There was so much overlap there, especially when the progressives were making excuses for new atheism. And I'm like, you guys, I know, have criticized like Dawkins and Harris. And but I think the way that they prefer the criticism to be packaged is like there's these couple of bad apples. Right. Right. And not to acknowledge the systemic issues within the atheist scene. And I think that comes from like having your identity very tied up in your atheism, especially if, say, like you have some atheist branded podcast or something, which are so cringe to me now, to be honest. I know, like, right? <laughs> um, 
I'm glad my podcast's you, never had the word atheist in the title. That's yeah, me too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you make some money off of like a very atheist identifying audience, then you're going to be defensive. Yeah, that's right. So that's probably where it came from. But, you know, I wonder too, because like you can, in a, in a sense, you can like, uh, you can get your audience to kind of follow you in some ways, right? So if you're following like a, a progressive, thoughtful, self-critical v- viewpoint, then your audience is maybe good. Like you'd think that your audience would follow you to some degree with that. Am I wrong? Yeah, but <laughs> no, no, no. You're not. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. You, what? So can you just say that again? Yeah. Like I'm. I'm just thinking like these. Uh, say you're an atheist podcaster and you want to criticize like, and and you're being criticized or the atheist community is being criticized. Would it, Mm -hmm. could you not take that and, and be thoughtful and, and, and take your audience with you on a journey of like self-criticism and learning rather than just doubling down on, on on how you package that criticism. If you are still very defensive about atheism, then you don't, wholeheartedly embrace the criticism and you sort of um, embrace little drops of it, then you're only going to focus on just the few bad apples. And that's the problem, guys. We're the good part of the scene, right? A lot of the the discourse around that time was like, from these guys was like, um, if you uh, are leaving the atheist scene then we don't need your drama. Like, we don't need you, you know? And it's like, do you hear the reasons why people say they've stepped away? It's because they're minorities who face harassment. They're, like, women who face sexism. Yeah. And you're just telling them that this is, like, some kind of, like, silly hissy fit that I think someone called it, like, we don't need your arrogance and you want to make it all about yourself or, well, we are trying to push back the tides of theocracy and you just waiting till the perfect movement comes along. Yeah. And it's just so obnoxious and so arrogant because they're telling people like me who grew up in a literal theocracy in Saudi fucking Arabia yeah. that I'm not doing anything to fight against theocracy. These but- <laughs> guys are. But their podcast is changing the world. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so Eric Weinstein. I don't yeah. know how familiar you are, but do you remember him saying that? Like, yeah. long form podcasting is going to, like, <laughs> save Western civilization or some shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that. Not because I listen to Eric Weinstein, but because other podcasts like yours <laughs> <laughs> have, have spoken about that. But yeah, yeah. So- no, it's absurd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess in that, uh, like, what is Western civilization? <laughs> what does that mean? It means someone is a fashy fuck. That's what it means. <laughs> That's what I thought. I, there was a, I, I recently was on, I'm, I'm kind of off topic all of a sudden, but. Uh, That's fine. I was on top. Let's uh, move off this topic. <laughs> yeah, please. Sure. I was in, on TikTok and uh, I saw there's a, a meme that's going around where wives ask their husbands how much they think about the Roman empire. And to me, that's a red flag. Like if you're thinking about the Roman empire, <laughs> you're thinking a about lot, it a lot. <laughs> there's yeah. something wrong, right? So, so, uh, apparently this is a thing. These men, that their wives are asking them. They're always like, how did you know? What are you talking about? Why do you think, why, like, why would you ask that question? And it's, it's like, they're white supremacists, right? Like, <laughs> like that's what this is. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not on TikTok, so I don't know the context fully, but yeah, yeah, like if you see anyone on Twitter with like these Greek statue profile pictures right, or right. talking a lot about Western architecture or Western civilization. Art used to be beautiful. These, or... <laughs> yeah. And then they'll show like one very selected thing. They won't show any. Yeah. Anything else from this time period, but they'll be like, oh, look, here's like a urinal. This was in an <laughs> art gallery. Look at this beautiful statue yeah. carved out of marble and look at this urinal. And it's like, come on. Yeah. 
like the most <laughs> dishonest possible framing that you can have. Yeah. Well, there was a white supremacist once who like tweeted um, like a picture of an Indian, like Indian woman or some, a woman of color. I can't remember, but like not a very, I guess, traditionally model looking person. And then like this very airbrushed white oh, yeah. blonde woman and be like, look, it's obvious, you know, right. white women are the best. And then someone like just tweeted the revert, like you can really engineer any sort of combination with that, right? You yeah. find some model looking person and yep. some extremely not model looking person and they can be of different races and you can do that tweet in a different way. Yeah, for sure. It's I, such dishonest framing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like it's just, it, it ignores like so much about society to say that sort of thing. Like, Okay, so you're judging this this woman from India on your European manufactured beauty standards from Glamour magazine, mm-hmm. and like, so you don't even know if she's beautiful or not because you're not even looking at her with like a, an unfiltered lens. Mm-hmm. And again, there's lots of Glamour magazine looking Indian women. Too, of course, yeah, so that's right, dude. Yeah, it's just a dishonest comparison. Yeah. In every single way. <laughs> yeah. And then there's like Jordan Peterson who weeps if he sees like a very attractive, but slightly larger, slightly larger. than a size zero yeah. woman on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And he weeps for months about it. Yeah. What a joke. What the, f- <laughs> what the fuck is that about? Because like... Nobody even asks your can, opinion, dude. Like nobody gives. And a why are you dwelling on it for weeks and weeks and weeks? <laughs> yeah. Like what? How narcissistic are you? Yeah, it's it's. This must be made for me. This this squ- swimsuit model uh, issue must be made for me, or I will revolt. We're we're done with <laughs> society now. <laughs> Just imagine the kind of privilege it takes to even assume that everything should be catered to you and only you. Because I can't imagine that. I've never had that privilege. I've, you know, as a brown woman, right. nothing has been catered to me. <laughs> right. It's specifically been avoided to cater to you. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't imagine looking at a magazine cover and being like, well, this is not my personal taste. <laughs> Therefore, often civilization is crumbling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the world is done. Yeah, yeah. No, I to some degree, I I do like I do understand the inclination because, like, say, I I have had so much of society has been geared towards making me feel smart and great and amazing mm. and and fulfilling the needs that I want and whatnot. But wait, are you gonna say that you helped me start my podcast after today? <laughs> also I helped Heinus start her podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> yeah. I'm the actual one. That's 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 how it works. Uh, <laughs> no. Of course not. But uh yeah. <laughs> but I I do understand like if you don't, if you don't examine your biases at all, like, and Jordan Peterson is clearly not a person who examines his biases, right? He <laughs> thinks that, yeah, the world is, ha- as it's been presented to me is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. But that's not how it is. <laughs> no, nope. I mean, just the fact that he puts his horrendous, like that one painting that he's done. I don't know if you, his logo, like the weird, like, semi-circle orange oh yes black. yes yeah off of the uh, maps of meaning book the cover mm. it's so bad it's so bad yeah. but he is just like still running with it he could afford to get a good graphic designer and rebrand is that what that suit of his was all, uh, all about yes the traffic cone right suit. yeah it yes, was it was exactly. like the suit version of his not nonsense art yeah <laughs> it, yeah i think he had the logo printed on the back i could see it yep yeah, like he's made rugs out of that logo, socks. Like he wow. sold a bunch. I mean, he's selling what, um, like busts of his own head. There's one time that I like he would he tweeted something about <laughs> you'll recognize. Do you know what I'm going to say? 
You're already laughing. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking about the idea of making busts of my own head and trying oh, to sell them to people. <laughs> For like fucking five, six hundred dollars. <laughs> And then around Christmas one year, he's like, shipping will be free. Who like, the fuck do you up, think you dude. are? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and the sad part is that some losers actually would buy it. Yeah. But um, one time he tweeted, like, you'll never see a narcissist, uh, you know, be as bad as someone who tweets LOL or so- something, something silly, up, like what? LOL or LMAO. I can't remember exactly. But someone that tweets that online is like the biggest possible narcissist and then i just like quote tweeted him and i'm like yeah but you were selling statues of your own head yeah. dude yeah that's right that was like a fun dunk to do i know they don't care about their own hypocrisy but sometimes right. it's just irresistible yeah yeah for sure i uh, it's it's funny that he would say that right because a lot of his followers are the kinds of people who see something awful and then tweet LMAO, right? Yeah. Like I can't, I can't count the number of people who have done the laugh reaction on my Facebook posts when I'm talking about systemic issues. Like, mm. like you're there. His fans are the people who do that. <laughs> mm. So, yeah. I mean, other people do it too. Yes, that's, and that's not necessarily. It's not an related to. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, of narcissism, right? Like yeah. the selling statues of yourself is. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right. Well, we're coming up on. Uh, we're actually past an hour already. So, <laughs> I guess, is there anything we should mention before we go? Um, uh, let's see. I guess top topic specific uh, about about the regressive bros or whatever. Oh, no, I was just going to plug my stuff. Oh, yeah, for Enough sure. Enough about absolutely. them. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Plug your plug away. Yeah. Uh, if you want to listen to my podcast, you can find it uh, most places where you find podcasts, Polite Conversations, and uh, check out my mini series called Woking Up and my new one called The Global Far Right. Cool. And uh, yeah, you can find me on the hell side still. I'm still there. Are you on anything um, else yet? I am on Blue Sky. Ah, uh, I'll have to look for you. Also as Nice Mangoes. Okay. Um, and I'm on Instagram. I'm planning to get more active there, but I barely have been. Cool. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Nice Mangoes Art. Nice. Right on. Well, I will also do what I can to include as many links as possible into the show yeah, notes. Yeah, thank you. And I don't sell statues of my own head. <laughs> Just sell statues of like somebody's head and say it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> I sell artwork of like weird tentacle people and stuff. I have a piece of your art from when I was a patron of your show. Uh, I don't think it's on the wall right now, but I have it still. It's it's a, a picture of Trump just saying what, and it's written oh, in yeah. the words, what the fuck. <laughs> that was a fun one to do. Well, thank you for, for supporting the show. Yeah, it's been a while, but. <laughs> but even whenever it was, thank you for that. Yeah, I, I enjoy your, your work and uh, I have enjoyed it, well, like I say, for years. So thank Great. you for, um, for continuing to do it. And yeah. Yeah, I, I hope I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching and or listening. Remember to share this show with your friends and on the social media site that you use the most. Thank you to everyone who supports this show on Patreon. I really appreciate it, and it helps me keep the internet and the power on. Thanks to my top patrons, Some Random Geek, Damien Marie at Hope, Justin Clark, Christopher Taylor, Dan F. Smith, and Lisa Glass. If you want to contribute, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can send a one-time donation at to me at buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical lefty. If you can't contribute financially, then a like on YouTube or a five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or one of the podcast review sites like Podchaser would be great. If you want to find more from me, then make sure to check out the show notes for links to all my stuff or check out my website, skepticalleftist.com. That's where you can find all of my social media spaces and communities. Uh, or you can also email me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening or watching. 
Make sure to leave a comment on the video or on my website. Join your local org, print off some posters or pamphlets, and spread the propaganda.